anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. In a world controlled by massive corporations, a steady aim and split-second decisions are needed for your Megacon to complete its goals. Begin your missions at the Mercs Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Hey everyone, we're still working away on the Drop Fleet Commander Bootcamp here at Beast of War Studios. And today, I'm making moons. Because one of the, um, one of the missions in the book, I believe it comes in the, does it come in the starter book? Yeah, it's the, the moonshot mission. Moonshot mission. Needs moons, so we're building moons. So when the guys turn up, and the gals, they can play away and do the whole moon action. Moon action? That, sound, that sounds completely wrong. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Moon action. To do that, we have some polystyrene spheres. Warren came in one day and went, I've got an idea for the moons. I think we'll use polystyrene spheres. And everyone went, yes, let's do that. So he's ordered up 10. So sort of, I, I assume they come in a pack because it all, it all arrived in one big box, just 10 of them. I don't know if they come in like two halves or not. But if they do come in two halves, they can be put together like that. There's like a, a lip on them there to connect the two together. So they kind of slot together like that. I'm not going to push it together because I can't get it apart again, but we're not actually going to do that because the effects and stuff we're going to apply to this won't work if we stick the two bits together because uh, we're going to use heat guns and heat guns cause polystyrene to retract. So if we stuck those together and then use the heat gun, it would just open up into a, a trench. I guess you can make a Death Star type thing. That might be kind of cool. That's no space station. It's a moon. Yeah, shh, don't tell Warren to come in and go, yeah, let's make flipping Death Stars. Okay, first problem is though, this lip causes a problem when we want to set the thing going flat on the gaming table. So, we're gonna get rid of that. Easy enough, let's just take a craft knife, uh, put it in at an angle like that, and cut away from the outside, as in we're cutting in like that, all round. Being careful enough to leave, you know, enough gap here, that there's enough material that when we work with it, it isn't too thin. Like so. Pop that back. There we go. And now I just have a couple of rough edges. Spread them out like that. Onto our lovely clean floor, which is always very clean when we're working on boot camps, isn't it, John? <laughs> Ta da! Now we have half a sphere that sits flat. <clears throat> these, sphere, these spheres are 30 centimeters in diameter. Isn't that that matches up with what's in the book? Uh, yeah, near enough. It's meant to be a foot wide, you're like five mil out. Is it? Yeah, oh, close That's enough. Make a difference. Right, moving on. We need to take this from that to something a bit more like that. Now, this is a finished product. Um, there was some debate about this when it was finished. The debate was. Um, the craters are too big. They need to be smaller. And then some of us going, but based on the scale of the moons we're making, the craters are probably about the right size. So after that, we've had another go at it. Um, I'm hoping you can see it. it. Might be a little dark, but the craters are smaller. These ones are quite deep. I like it. I think it's funky. It's um a bit like um. What was that guy who went to the moon in the bean tent? Uh, Mr. Mr. Spoon. Mr. Mr. Spoon went to We've the moon. We've been to Button Moon. Button Moon, that's it. We followed Mr. <laughs> Spoon Button Moon. Okay, enough. <laughs> I quite like it because it's it's punchy and it's you know it shows up well. At the diameter, I mean, we're making moons that are about. If we're going with scale to the book and stuff, they're about three kilometers across, something like that. Well, so I guess Asteroid Strikes would be about this sort of size, but there's been debate and we're kind of going to a smaller crater size. Okay, but I'll show you both crater sizes and how to make them as we move through this. Now, let's get back to our half sphere. This is going to be really easy to do. We just take our craft knife and all we need to do, I'm going to start here because you want to get rid of that. If you guys are doing this at home, you have this sort of top thing on your on your moon you want to get rid of that so I'm just gonna break that up by putting a couple of craters in around it 
okay? And as you see, all I'm doing is putting the craft knife in and knocking out three or four of these little polystyrene balls. And that will give you the craters that you want. Now, so there's a, there's a set of shallow ones. They should make craters that are not very big. If I go a little bit deeper, so that's about twice the amount of material taken out, we should get a, a much bigger, deeper crater there. But I think we've come around to liking more of the shallow effect. You know, more shallow craters, but more of them. Because more is more, apparently, and apparently more is best. So what I'm going to do is keep doing that. I don't want to space them out, bop, 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 bop. And I don't want it to look like a grid. You want it to look haphazard. So you know, I'll, I'll group two or three together like that. And then I'll take a space. And then I'll take a space. And maybe I'll group two down here like that. So you get that sort of peppered look. Now, if you look at our moon, our moon is just head to toe craters do, 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 everywhere. But I'm not going to spend all day doing that on this. Because the next step is heat gunning it, and the heat gunning does an effect that sort of makes it look like lots of tiny craters are all over it. Anyway, that's it. That's basically all you need to do. I'm going to put another big crater down here. See the way it's twice the size of that. The more material you take out, the bigger the craters will, craters will be. Okay, that's one effect that's going to happen when we go shift the heat gunning. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to show you something else. So, what we're going to use. There's a Black & Decker heat gun, the sort of thing you use for stripping paint off, off um, skirting boards and things like that. You can get fancy ones, uh, Tim Chubb from the, the website, Nackjack, isn't it Nackjack? He was here um, for the last boot camp and he showed me this really cool heat gun. It's like for doing electronic work and you can change the nozzles on it and you can change how much airflow comes out of it and obviously the heat and stuff. And he's like, you should get yourself one of those and I'm like, actually. Christmas is coming up, I'm thinking maybe that would be pretty good. I'm looking at John, see if he's at all interested in the heat gun. Are you interested in the heat gun, John? Not in the least. Uh, oh well. I like it. But anyway. You, boys and toys. <laughs> Let's get stuck in. So, just heat it up. I'm going to aim it away from myself, make sure I don't burn myself. Let it go up to temperature, and then I'm going to bring it in and watch what happens to the craters. As you can see, what happens is the heat gets into the hole and the polystyrene starts to retract away. It starts to go away from the, from the surface and widens out to give you nice craters. And if you want to go deeper and stuff, you just take the heat gun and just keep applying it to an area in particular. Like that. Okay, now on the top, you'll have seen it. it's important to go over that to make sure you get rid of that ring that's on the top of your of your moon, because you don't want a ring in the middle of your moon. It'll just look weird. Okay, now, hopefully you picked up from that, that if you want different effects, you want, you want the surface to feel different, you just either apply, you can apply the, air, the, the hot air gun longer, and it melts more, and you can push it right in. But what you want to make sure is you do is you want to make sure you go all the way around the sphere. You don't want any of this leftover material that literally looks like polystyrene balls. And it also, it's a bit, you hear the sound difference? Hopefully you can. It's a crisper surface. It's harder wearing. It's less likely to have bits pick out of it after you've gone over the whole surface. Now, you, you do the whole thing. You just go around the whole moon like that, adding little craters. The whole way, round everything, all the way around, making sure you get down to the down to the base as well. Put some down around there because you don't want suddenly a big solid band of no craters because that's just going to look weird. Right, but another effect we're going to try here, we're going to try a fractured effect. Um, if you see pictures of Mars, they have like this, this, this big trench, this big Grand Canyon type thing. I can't quite remember what the name of it is, but you know the one I'm talking about. But I know that's made from like corrosion and water movement and ice and all this sort of stuff. I think we'll do something similar on our moon and what we're going to say is oh a big crater's impacted it and started to fracture it or something put a big fracture up it so 
I've done some over here where it's coming up from like the, the equator of the moon. On this particular one I'm working on, I'm wondering, should we try fracturing it across the top? Yeah, let's try that. You To do that, you basically just put in a guideline for where you want your trench using your craft knife like that, and you want it to break off into into other cracks as you go. So it looks like a big fracture line, and then I'll maybe make this a bit wider than that, so when it's heat gone out, we end up with a big sort of trench bit here. What I'm doing is I thought this would be a cool way to obscure that ring we had. Um, let's get another couple of fracture lines coming off this. Hopefully this looks good. I haven't done it on the top before. Anytime I've done it before, it's always been, like I said, done around the bottom. You get that sort of coming up from the equator thing, and that way you don't have to worry about where the where the fracture lines and stuff go to. They just sort of appear. This way it's going to be in full view, so I have no idea what it's going to look like. Let's just proceed on. Um, hopefully you can see this at home. And we'll bring it around this way. As if this moon is starting to break. Right down the middle into two. Oh, fracture that out. That's my that's like cool. Now you can see, even after you peek on the air, you can still come in with your craft knife and work out bits and pieces of it. That's the great thing about polystyrene, is it's really easy to work with. And then we'll give that a big bit there as if it's widened out, cracking out that direction. Okay. I think I need to put another one in here. Really interesting, like it's just cracking right down the middle. Did you get all of that? So that's what I've been doing. Uh, before I heat gun that, I'll, I'll, I'll heat gun this pretty quickly, but you would go through and put your craters in around it again. Just like we did in the first step of what we did. Uh, put a deep one there, so just a wee refresher. A few wee balls will give you a small one. If you put a lot of, if you dig out a lot of the balls, you'll get a much bigger crater. But I'm impatient, I want to see what it looks like. So let's get the heat going up. Give it a sec to get up the temperature. And then bring it in, see what happens. go that's the effect we got if anybody knows john you don't know what the, the, the big craters the big trench on mars is called do you uh no idea oh it's bugging me now let us know in the comments below but there you go you get the idea and that's going to be like a moon that's starting to break up maybe it's had a big impact it's going to fracture right across the middle right uh i've covered craters uh, i've covered the trenches um you will see here's here's what we've done earlier you want to go around the whole sphere, put in lots of little craters all around it. But as you heat on it, you get this dippled effect, which in my mind gives you gives you something that looks like you've got tons and tons of little craters all around it. And if you like this this more Swiss cheese effect, just dig out more of the material, and you'll get those much bigger craters. Okay, that's it. Uh, we'll come back and we'll cover a little painting when we've got all our balls up to speed. See you in a bit. 
Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jax, Arcane Devices, and Dark Sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Venture into the dangerous dungeons of Myth as a mighty hero and stand against the darkness. Visit the Myth Hub on BeastsOfWar.com and begin your story.